Okay, we'll turn now to um, another area of civil procedure, and this is the area of part of the area of jurisdiction. We're still talking about jurisdiction in the area of civil procedure. And the question is, what kind of contact is necessary for a person to be brought before a court in a particular jurisdiction? The, this particular case is International Shoe Company versus Washington. This is a very famous case. It's something you are likely to see when you get to law school. And uh, if you read it now, you'll have a, a bit of an advantage over your um, classmates. The issue is minimum contacts. Minimum contacts. The minimum contacts necessary for jurisdiction to apply uh, in any particular lawsuit. Let's ask this first question. What were the principal questions before the court? Now, very often you're going to find that there's a, a, a very important case and the court will have a series of questions before it that need to be addressed. Uh, it's important that you understand that you are responsible for knowing each and every one of those major questions because that is likely to be asked when you get to the classroom the following day. Here's what the court said. First, whether the limitations of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment, whether within the limitations of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment, appellant, a Delaware corporation, has by its activities in the state of Washington rendered, rendered itself amenable to proceedings in the courts of that state to recover unpaid contributions to the state unemployment compensation fund exacted by state statutes. And B, whether the state can exact those contributions consistently with the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. So what we have here is a Delaware, Delaware corporation and it has some sort of activity in the state of Washington. And the state of Washington has an unemployment compensation system and the question is whether or not this Delaware corporation has been doing business or having some sort of activities that are sufficient enough to require it to be subject to the unemployment compensation statutes. Next question that may be asked, what contact did the Delaware corporation have within the state of Washington? Now that's going to be key to uh, this analysis because it's the, the very subject matter that's at hand. What was that particular contact the Delaware Corporation had in Washington? What is this all about? And the court said that the appellant had no office in Washington, makes no contracts either for sale or purchase of merchandise there, and it maintains no stock of merchandise in that state, makes no deliveries. But during the years from 1937 to 1940, which are the years that are now in question, the appellant employed 13, 11 to 13 salesmen under direct supervision and control of sales managers located in St. Louis. Those salesmen resided in Washington. Their principal activities were confined to the state of Washington, and they were compensated by commissions based upon the amount of their sales. The Supreme Court of Washington was of the opinion that the regular and systematic solicitation of orders in the state by appellant salesmen resulted in a continuous flow of appellant's product into the state. So now we're talking about flow of the product owned by the plant, produced by the appellant going into the state. And that was sufficient to constitute doing business in the state so as to make appellant amenable to suit in his courts. What the court is saying is that, look, you guys are, are doing business because you have hired employees, these salespersons, who are making sales in the state of Washington. And because of their sales, your goods come into the state. There is a lawsuit against you, and therefore we, we have decided that because of the business that you are conducting, you can be subject to suit in our state. The court was also of the opinion that there were sufficient additional activities shown to bring the case within the rule frequently stated that solicitation within a state by agents of a foreign corporation 
plus, plus some additional activities in that state are sufficient to render the corporation amenable to suit brought in the courts of the state to enforce an obligation arising out of his activities there. So it wasn't just the fact that they were making these sales, that they had these sales guys here who were, who were you know, selling their products, but there were some additional activities, and that was key for their decision because it, 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 it added more impact to the ultimate decision and the ultimate ruling. Another question that you should anticipate, what was the corporation's best argument as to why it could not be sued in the state of Washington? Now, this is a little bit subtle, but it's something you should be able to anticipate. Your professors are likely to ask you questions that are not set forth directly in the text of the, of the cases. Your, your professors are, are asking you to use your recollection of what you read and, tr and recall exactly what the, ar the best argument was but on the half of, of a particular party. Now, in this particular case, in International Shoe, the court said this, or the argument that the court reiterated was this, that the corporation's activities within the state were not sufficient to manifest its presence there, and that in its absence, the state courts were without jurisdiction, that consequently it was a denial of due process for the state to subject the appellant to a suit. It refers to those cases in which it was said that the mere solicitation of orders for the purchase of goods within a state to be accepted without the state and filled by shipment of the purchased goods intrastate does not render the corporation seller amenable to suit in that state. And appellant further argues that since it was not present within the state, it is a denial of due process to subject it to taxation or other money exactation. It thus denies the power of the state to lay the tax or to subject appellant to a suit for its collection. So that's their argument. They're saying, look, we've got some cases that show the exact opposite of what you, you guys are talking about. I mean, we, we have cases that we cite that say that the mere solicitation, just because we have salesmen in the state, mere solicitation of orders in the state for the purchase of goods that are outside the state is not enough. There, there has to be more. 